We're having a very dramatic uh, rescue right now, actually not in the Wilton area, but right over at Dillard Road in 99, as an uh, Army or National Guard Blackhawk is hoisting one of his crew members down to this black pickup truck below. This is Rob Marshall reporting from Air 10. There is one gentleman in the back of his pickup truck, and not only is the water coming around his uh, truck and rushing uh, quite uh, fiercely around him, but also the downwash of the helicopter is affecting him. What should be happening here momentarily is once the, uh, the helicopter's got uh, the crew member right above him, the, uh, the, the victim will uh, actually grab a hold and they will uh, bring him up. But it's a very dramatic rescue that's happening right now. And we're going to hold the pictures right here to let the pictures speak and you can see exactly what's going on. But of course, not only uh, is this happening right here, but of course, uh, this is the problem all around uh, the area around the Kasumnas River area. Just because of the veracity, the fierceness, the swiftness of the, of the water, how much water is actually coming through the area. But again, one more rescue is being attempted right now by the uh, National Guard and their Black Hawk helicopter just to the west side of uh, Dillard Road and 99. Just wait for him to go right on into the uh, area, and it won't be too long before he's able to actually extract and bring this victim back up. All the helicopter will do will position the, uh, the crew member right above. It's a very tough and tedious uh, operation, especially with the trees around. But as you can see, uh, the helicopter pilot is doing a fabulous job on positioning his crew member so they can uh, get this uh, one individual. Absolutely, Jennifer. In fact, as we've been talking all day long, at many, in many points, uh, the water has actually gone over the levee. Now, because of the, the, the veracity and how swift the water is moving, the power that it's, uh, it's putting out has actually blown uh, right through the levees, busting them wide open in many, many spots. In fact, if Phil will just uh, widen out just a little bit, you'll see uh, where, this, uh, where the water has actually blown through this particular levee here. And this is... Uh, I'm not sure how long ago this actually happened where it blew through the levee, but uh, we were out in this particular area earlier today where you saw that Winnebago that was just stranded on top of the levee. This is just no more than about 100 yards from that house that we'd seen earlier. Um, but uh, just the power, the absolute power of the water coming through here is undermining and going across and uh, doing everything it can to break through on these levees. It, the water's just trying to go somewhere and it's finding a place. Now here you can see uh, the uh, crew members now, well, we I looked it appeared that he had uh, latched on, but it's very difficult. A little bit of wind down there and uh, just the swaying motion uh, as the helicopter pilot tries to uh, put his crew member right there so that the uh, victim can grab a hold and can bring him to safety. And that's the primary right now, Jennifer, is just trying to get this particular guy up to the helicopter and to uh, safe ground. It's just a mad, the main thing, Jennifer, is for him to get a very good hold onto uh, the crew member and then they can uh, bring him up. Of course, they're in control uh, or the uh, crew member is actually uh, communicating by hand signals with the, uh, the winch operator up in the helicopter. Oh no, we're about, uh, actually we're sitting at about 600 feet above uh, the river right now and maybe Oh, a, a quarter of a mile away. So we have the capacity with the with the camera system to really get in and 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 have the nice, steady, and clean shots. But no, the helicopter's right down below me. He knows I'm here. We have been talking, so he is very well aware that I'm right here. And uh, just told him I'd be here, watching his uh, watching his movements. And if there's anything that we can do to help him out, uh, we can do that as well. It's hard to tell. I wouldn't suspect that's what's happening. What I, well, what, you know what they might be trying to do, with Jennifer, is actually get over to that solid ground so that he can get a better uh, grip on too. As you can see, he's having a very, very uh, hard time. He is on foot. That's exactly what he did, Jennifer. Got him to higher ground, and he's just got a little bit, uh, maybe about 100 yards to walk to complete safety and get up on the main uh, road there where there are some other people standing by. They've got some vehicles there. So it appears at this point, at least uh, this one particular individual has made it to safety, although his car and it looked like he had a Harley in the back of his truck uh, probably won't make it through this uh, particular uh, levee break.
There he is. And these, uh, this National Guard copter is out of the Mather uh, base. And, uh, of course, they've been out here for quite a while. They were called in, and they have five rescue helicopters out just to do this type of thing. And they should be doing them for the rest of the day or at any, uh, any instant when it, there is need. Copy that, I'm watching. He's on the bank over here. That, uh, that should be him. Yeah. Looks like he's on the ground. Yeah, there's somebody down the road. There are a couple people in the houses, but go back over here. Oh, starting to circle us. Oh, that was the best feeling. We're having a very dramatic uh, rescue right now. This is Rob Marshall reporting from Air 10. There is one gentleman in the back of his pickup truck, and not only is the water coming around his uh, truck and rushing uh, quite uh, fiercely around him, but also the downwash of the helicopter is affecting him. What should be happening here momentarily is once the, uh, the helicopter's got the, the crew member right above him, the, uh, the, the victim will uh, actually grab a hold and they will uh, bring him up. But it's a very dramatic rescue that's happening right now. And we're going to hold the pictures right here and let the pictures speak, and you can see exactly what's going on. But, of course, not only uh, is this happening right here, but, of course, uh, this is the problem all around uh, the area, around the Kasumnas River area, just because of the ferocity, the fierceness, the swiftness of the, of the water, how much water is actually coming through the area. But, again, one more rescue is being attempted right now by the uh, National Guard in their Black Hawk helicopter just to the west side of uh, Billard Road in 99. Just wait for him to go right on into the uh, area and it won't be too long before he's able to actually extract and bring this victim back up. All the helicopter will do will position the, uh, the crew member 
right above. It's a very tough and tedious uh, operation, especially with the trees around. But as you can see, uh, the helicopter pilot is doing a fabulous job on positioning his crew members so they can uh, get this uh, one individual. Rob, this is Jennifer Smith back here in the studio as we continue to watch this dramatic rescue. These, these guys really put their lives on the line to help others. But let's point out about the Kasumnas River, one of the difficulties, it does not have the same kind of flood protection that, say, the American and the Sacramento River have. There are no dams, there are no weirs. This is a free-flowing river, and it has definitely gone beyond its banks, and there's no way to control the flow of that water. Absolutely, Jennifer. In fact, as we've been talking all day long, at many, in many points, uh, the water has actually gone over the levee. Now, because of the, the, the veracity and how swift the water is moving, the power that it's, uh, it's putting out has actually blown uh, right through the levees, busting them wide open in many, many spots. In fact, if Phil will just uh, widen out just a little bit, you'll see uh, where, this, uh, where the water has actually blown through this particular levee here. And this is, uh, I'm not sure how long ago this actually happened, where it blew through the levee. But uh, we were out in this particular area earlier today where you saw that Winnebago that was just stranded on top of the levee. This is just no more than about 100 yards from that house that we'd seen earlier. Um, but uh, just the power, the absolute power of the water coming through here is undermining and going across and uh, doing everything it can to break through on these levees. It, the water's just trying to go somewhere and it's finding a place. Now here you can see uh, the uh, crew members now. Well, we I, look, it appeared that he had uh, latched on, but it's very difficult. A little bit of wind down there and uh, just the swaying motion uh, as the helicopter pilot tries to uh, put his crew member right there so that the uh, victim can grab a hold and can bring him to safety. And that's the primary right now, Jennifer, is just trying to get this particular guy up to the helicopter and to uh, safe ground. I can imagine some hearts are pounding pretty fast right now, that man in the back of his pickup truck. And of oh, course, there he goes. There, you go. there he goes. Now, hopefully, there he's going to jump on right oh. now. Hold this picture. It's very, very, very difficult, a very scary thought that's happening to this particular individual right now. Let's hope he has a good grip. It looks like he does have some footing there for a it moment. It appears that way, Jennifer. That's what I'm noticing also at the same time. It's just a mad, the main thing, Jennifer, is for him to get a very good hold onto uh, the crew member and then they can uh, bring him up. Of course, they're in control, uh, or the uh, crew member is actually uh, communicating by hand signals with the, uh, the winch operator up in the helicopter. And we should point out, Air 10 is certainly away from the scene. We have this camera that's able to zoom in quite a way, so you are in no way interfering with this rescue operation at this time. Oh, no. We're about, uh, actually, we're sitting at about 600 feet above uh, the river right now, and maybe, oh, a, a quarter of a mile away. So we have the capacity with the, with the camera system to really get in and, 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 and have the nice, steady, and clean shots. But no, the helicopter's right down below me. He knows I'm here. We have been talking. So he is very well aware that I'm right here and uh, just told him I'd be here watching his, uh, watching his movements. And if there's anything that we can do to help him out, uh, we can do that as well. Rob, does it appear that they're trying to get to those trees and maybe put him in the trees as a higher ground? Or it's hard to tell at this point? It's hard to tell. I wouldn't suspect that what's happening. What I, well, what, you know, what they might be trying to do, with Jennifer, is actually get over to that solid ground so that he can get a better uh, grip on too. As you can see, he's having a oh. very, very uh, hard oh. time. Oh. We can see he's on foot, though. He, he is, is running. Foot. Oh, that's good. That is good. That's exactly what he did, Jennifer. Got him to higher ground, and he's just got a little bit, uh, maybe about 100 yards to walk to complete safety and get up on the main uh, road there where there are some other people standing by. They've got some vehicles there. So it appears at this point, at least uh, this one particular individual has made it to safety, although his car and it looked like he had a Harley in the back of his truck uh, probably won't make it through this uh, particular uh, levy break. And there's a hero right there. There he is. Man who lowered himself risking his own life to save someone else in these rising waters. Californians are endowed with an indomitable will and a generous heart. Nature's worst it seems brings out our best. Heroes like Staff Sergeant James Joseph Moore, a medic with the California National Guard. Now, five days ago Sergeant Moore was in a decidedly more interesting position than he is tonight. He was dangling from a helicopter on 60 feet of cable, with high-powered, high-voltage power lines close by, lifting an elderly man from his rooftop to dry land. If that wasn't enough excitement, two hours later he was at it again, this time plucking a large man from the roof of his soon-to-be-submerged pickup truck. 
you should know that on the day before that before he went on duty that day sergeant moore's wife warned him i quote don't be a hero sometimes we husbands don't always listen to our wives we applaud sergeant moore and every californian who showed uncommon valor in caring for their friends and neighbors. We trade there all the time. The guys are really good. The pilots are great. The crew chief's great. The biggest danger actually would be the person that we're rescuing. What did you tell him when he went off to work the other day? Well, not to be here. The people in uniform are trained professionals, but they certainly weren't the only heroes in the great floods of 97. When flood